guys, I'm Eric. And I'm Grace. We're the Wandering Ravens. And today we are going to tell you eight different ways that Korea changed us. For those of you who don't know, Grace and I actually spent two whole years living in South Korea, teaching English, experiencing the culture, making friends, and having a grand old time. Eventually we left and it has now been... How many months? Six months. Six months since we left Korea. Wow. In that time, we've had a lot of time to think about the ways that Korea has affected us and changed us. And we've changed a lot more than we expected. Yeah. The first way that Korea changed us is that it inspired us to live more healthy lives. You know this already, but the American diet is pretty Sad. horrible. Yeah, it's full of sugar and salt and all this awful stuff that makes us sick and fat. So getting exposed to a whole other cuisine and being forced to cook with Korean products, eat Korean food, and go for two years of this affected our health and our diets a lot. Mm -hmm. So it gave us a different perspective looking on nutrition and things. Mm -hmm. And it was for the best. An indirect way that Korea inspired us to live in a more healthy manner was that I actually got pretty sick while we were in Korea. Mm -hmm. um, we thought it had to do with the pollution or maybe our apartment. But in the end, we found out that it had to do with parasites. Not just one, but multiple types of parasites that were making me extremely sick that I had gotten from water and food um, while in Korea. And because of that, it inspired me to learn a lot more about health and nutrition and how to maintain a healthy diet that keeps your gut and intestines happy. Number two, Korea changed us in that now we hate tipping. Before moving to Korea, we actually worked as servers for a long time. I was in the service industry for I think over six years, that really established in us a mentality of tipping. Like you have to tip, tipping is a good thing and um, servers rely on our tips and all this. But then we moved to a country, Korea, where tipping is not part of the culture. You don't have to tip and we've completely switched our perspective on tipping. Now we hate tipping. It makes the dining experience stressful because you have to pay money to the servers and you know the servers are expecting it. It also mm -hmm. makes dining out extremely expensive. It's it awkward. Works. It feels like you're stealing my money and I don't want to do it anymore. We actually don't go out to eat when we go back to the States now because that's how much we hate tipping. Do you like tipping? Do you hate tipping? What's tipping like where you yeah, come does from? Does your culture tip? Let us know. Number three, Korea made us take a lot better care of our skin, as yeah. you can see. Look, dude. Look at this, she's flawless. American girls do lotion, but what is the difference between like the way American girls do lotion and the way Korean girls do lotion? Korean girls are committed, okay? Like in America, you just do one, you just do lotion and then it's off. Yep, and you just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I kind of derailed you there. The Koreans do like everything. Toner, and then they have like the moisturizer, mm -hmm. and then they have the night cream, and then they have the eye cream, and then they have the day cream, and then they have like the lip balm. And masks. And yeah, and all the masks. Yeah, you do so many so many face masks. Like those ones you take out and you like, it feels like you're putting someone else's face on your face. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds terrible. But your skin looks great. It looks great. Prior to moving to Korea, I always thought of skincare as like, you know, that's what girls do. But after moving to Korea, I learned that it's okay for guys to take care of your skin as well. And so that's, I've started moisturizing. Yeah. As you can see, he looks 10 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> I look 15. <laughs> Number four, Korea inspired us to start our own business. Now, I've got a business opportunity for you. No, just kidding. It's not that kind of business. The way Korea inspired us to start a business is that we were there teaching and I was teaching full time at an elementary school and we realized that we kind of want to keep staying on the road for a while, but we don't want to be teaching English in order to do it. We didn't want to be tied to a contract. Yes. That was one of the biggest things. Yeah, we didn't want to have to make a one year contract because for all these teaching gigs, the majority of them, you have to sign up for a full year in one location. And after doing that two years in Korea, we were like, you know, this is a really slow way to see the world. And teaching English, you also spend a lot of time teaching and not enough time seeing things. And then one night, 
everything changed because late I was having kimchi dreams off of a delicious meal of topoki and was, did I make topoki? Probably. What was it say I made topoki? She made topoki and it inspired me to have this dream. I dreamt that we were traveling and working as writers full time with our own business. And I woke up and I told Grace and I was like, Grace, I just had this great dream. I dreamt that we were writers and we had our own business. It was awesome. And then I just went about my day. But Grace was like, wait, what'd you say? This is a sign from the Lord. That's not what she said. <laughs> no. <laughs> what did you say? I said, well, why don't we try that? And it was like this big light bulb moment where we realized, hey, you know, let's not chase teaching contracts. Let's try to start our own business. And so we did. And now we own our own freelance writing business. I'll link it in the description in case you guys want to see what we do. But we are travel copywriters, which means that we write for websites that work in the travel industry. Doing that allows us to travel. Yay! Yeah, so Korea, thank you because some delicious kimchi topoki meal inspired me to have a dream that inspired us to start our own business. Next! The fifth way that Korea changed us is that now we mix Korean into our everyday language. So whether that be like asking each other for things or just just random, the little amount of Korean that we know, we still use often. Yeah, pretty, like there's words in our vocabulary that we have just substituted and now it's a Korean word. And I don't we know, I forgot. It might just be that way forever. The English equivalent. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I'm like, um... Do I say 사랑해요 in English? Korean is like in the mix now, and I don't know if it's ever gonna go away. For those of you who've lived in another culture, what are certain cultural things that you've implemented now into your daily life? Mm -hmm. Like, do you use just little bits of the language, or... Yeah. yeah. Like, what? have you had any of that cultural mixing? Oh my goodness, I thought of this thing last night while I was in bed, and it was brilliant, and I wanted to write it down. And it was when people were talking about like being cultured or whatever. Uh -huh. Whatever. I was like, I am as cultured as a tub of Greek yogurt. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> I thought of it and I was like, I like brilliant. The, the head nod. <laughs> the Can I put that in the video? <laughs> <laughs> no, I I copyright that. That's mine. Number six. In case you haven't seen this video, which I will link right here, Korea made us minimalist, and it did this by forcing us to live inside of a very small apartment for two years where we weren't able to buy anything because we didn't have any room and we realized, huh, you know what? We don't actually need that much stuff to live. And to and be happy. We're very happy here, yeah. We didn't even know we wanted to be minimalist. It was like something we were we stumbled into and we're like, oh, this, this is, is kind is of cool. nice. Let's keep it going. Maybe and we should make this a lifestyle. Anyway. Exactly, yeah. Are you glad that Korea made you a minimalist? Absolutely, absolutely, freaking lutely. It's so nice because a lot of people have a lot of unnecessary wardrobe items and I used to be like that too. I actually came home and still had a huge bin full of clothes in our storage unit of clothes that I were from when I was 17 years old and would never wear again. And so for me, I was like, ah, oh, why do I have so many clothes? All of these clothes are gonna make it make me have, you know, this anxiety about decision making for clothes. Does anyone else get that? Like decision making anxiety mm -hmm. based off of your clothes. You're like, I have too many clothes. I can't decide what to wear. So for me now, I have 16 clothing items in total. That is my entire wardrobe is 16 things. And so now I don't have that anxiety based off of what I should wear because I only have a few things and what I have, I absolutely love. So whatever I wear, I'm going to be happy with it. Yes. yes! Thank you, Korea. You did us a solid. The seventh way that Korea has changed us is that we still bow. We continue to bow. Even six months after we left Korea, we will still bow when we enter an establishment or when we're leaving. Yeah. Yeah. Or I mean, when we're like meeting someone mm -hmm. for the first time. It's I still. The, the inclination and two handed everything. Like, and it kicks in on a greater level when I see Asian people. Like, even more so. I will never fail to bow 
to an Asian person. Oh, another one, which is kind of related because it's like a culture thing that's ingrained, is respecting people's business cards. Because in Korea, a business card is like an extension of someone's soul. And if they hand you a business card, you take it with two hands, you admire it. Oh, it's like, you know, you look at Taste it. Taste it. And you never, ever put it in your pocket while they're like talking with you. So I've had situations since then where like an American person or an English person hands me their business card. I'm like, thank you. They're just like, wow. And I'm like, I'm complimenting really them on it and I'm turning it around. And then I just like hold it in my hand while we finish the conversation. And then we walk away and I put it right here because I still can't put it in my back, back pocket. Back pocket, because it's like. In Korea, you don't do that. Because you don't, so you wouldn't rude. sit on someone's soul. It's just really cool. These little These like little flavors works. of Korean culture mm -hmm. that are stuck with us. I like it. Yeah. I want to go back. Number eight and last, this is probably the biggest way that Korea has impacted our lives and changed our futures. It made us want to travel more. Yeah. As we wanted to travel before we were married. The growing up, we'd always wanted to travel, but it's one of those things that it's like you want to do it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to do it or that you will do it or that you expect to do it mm -hmm. yeah we went to korea fully intending to return after one year and then after six months of being in korea we had to make the decision about whether or not we would renew my contract for a second year of teaching and we had fully expected to just be like nah and go back home but when it came time to renew the contract it, we actually had this big internal struggle yeah. we were like we realized wait do we want to go home and the answer was, not really? Yeah. We solved it after weeks and weeks of debating whether or not we should stay another year or go home. We finally went out to this cafe and we're like, all right, we're gonna settle this. We were like, we're not leaving this cafe until we've decided what we're doing next yeah. year. So what we're gonna do, we have two options, stay or go. We're gonna count to three and each of us say the thing that we feel in that moment called to do yeah, yeah. all right so we're like stay or go and we went like this are you ready let's do it it was, it was like, like three one, two, two one stay <laughs> so we decided to stay in korea a second year and in that second year it was really solidified that we love travel the experience of being in a new place where things are uncomfortable. It was a little bit challenging as well. Mm -hmm. And I I feel that we we were like, oh, it's kind of it's kind of an adrenaline rush yeah. to be like, oh, I have to learn how to read a separate language. I have to understand problem, problem what, solving what this all the means, time. what that means. I have to understand how to catch a bus. How to open a bank English. account in a different language with a teller who doesn't speak English. Yeah, it really yeah. is kind of like a little thrill, like an adrenaline rush. And we were like, wow. We kind of like being uncomfortable sometimes. Stepping outside of your comfort zone is good. And engaging with people that believe different than you is good. And people who think differently than you. Like, did you know that Korea is actually the biggest country in the world? <laughs> I didn't know that, but that's what I heard in Korea. The cliche is that you travel to find yourself. And when we set forth and traveled for the first time together, we weren't going to find ourselves. We were going to have an adventure and return home, and we actually left very certain of who we were and what we wanted yeah. from life and what the future looked like. Like we had this picture of the house and the normal American life mm -hmm. in our mind, and we were very certain that that's what we wanted. We didn't need to find ourselves, and yet we stumbled into a, a new version of ourselves, I guess. Yeah, so we discovered that we liked a different way of living mm -hmm. and that we would be happier if we pursued that alternate way of living as opposed to the way that we had always imagined for ourselves. Wow, we changed a lot. Korea, you really changed us a lot. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We Thank you, so, Korea. I feel, I feel much happier about our plan now. That wraps this video up, but before you run away, drop a comment down below letting us know how travel has changed you. Now, you know how it has changed us. I would love to hear what kind of experiences, beliefs, cultural things of yours have been affected by being exposed to a different way of thinking in a different culture. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave us a massive thumbs up. And subscribe down below to get more travel in your life. Yes. 
hitting the subscribe button will make sure that our videos stay in your notification feed. And we have a lot of trips planned this year. We're gonna do a lot more Culture Shock videos and we're gonna probably all of the animals are making oh, the animals. Decision. We're house sitting right now, and there's a cat meowing over here, and there's a dog scratching over there. So we oh, better go take yeah, care of probably... it. Why is he jumping? Doddy! I'm coming, love! Is he jumping at the mail? Doddy!